Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapy Dog Talk. My name is Sherry. My pup's names are Sunny and Riley. And each week we talk with different therapy dog teams around the world about the impact they're making in their area. If you're just getting started or you're not sure where to get started, we have a free guide that you can find at freeguide.therapydogtalk.com and also a community you can join at community.therapydogtalk.com. Today, we're going to be talking with Sarah and her therapy dog, Pixel, who is a Klikai, all about their experiences volunteering through pet partners at UCI Health and what it's been like to work with a very high energy vocal breed as a therapy dog. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Sarah. Hi, Pixel. Hi, Sherry. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing well. Just trying to beat this heat out here in Southern California. It's been a rough one. Yeah, I feel you. I'm in Los Angeles. Sometimes I feel like I'm melting through yeah. the lives, but if I turn on my fan, then you turn my fan. Yeah. Well, Sarah, for those who don't know you and Pixel, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Sarah Phillips. We've been a pet partners team since May of 2019. Our main hub for our pet therapy is at UCI Medical Center in Orange, California. But we've done conventions, elementary schools, high schools, stress events at colleges. And in our free time, we just like to go swimming lay in the sun and melt, but we enjoy being with pet partners, partnering with other teams during our visit, and also advocating for our breed because you don't see a lot of them in therapy. They do a lot of sports. So we're so excited to get out there and show the world, the pet therapy world, what an Alaskan clique I could do, what they're capable of doing besides just talking and singing. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. I know you and I were talking earlier. My only experience with click lines is following the account like with click high. And so I just love them. This is from that account. And that is pixel to a T when we're not working is this singing, talking, you know, so we really try to focus on the management side of it when we are doing therapy. When she sees the best, it's time to work. It's time to focus. And she's typically quiet. There are times where she does want to sing and talk and I give her the command quiet. And she's typically, she's not like this when she's working. Very exciting. As she should be. This is all about her. <laughs> Pixel, is this your first Instagram interview? This it is. Yeah, this is our first one. No wonder she's so excited. <laughs> yeah, but that's a little bit about us. So that's awesome. Well, Sarah, how did you first find out about therapy dogs? I've been in the pet industry for 10 years, and I was kind of learning about dogs, dog behavior, what's out there and available for our dogs to do, sports, pet therapy, service dog. So I learned from firsthand, what do dogs need? And they need a job, you know, either it be hunting, pet therapy, barn hunt. I met Pixel at nine months. I worked with her hand in hand until she was about two. That's when I took her over and I adopted her. Having her in my household, I felt like she was kind of bored. She needed to do something. And even though she loved to run around, I felt like agility wasn't quite her jam. I had family members that were sick. When you could see that energy from her, she picked up on it. She'd lay with them. She'd lick them. And certain people she wouldn't do that with. So it was kind of amazing to see that bond, you know, her sleeping on somebody's lap. And that's when I kind of realized, you know what, let's do this. So I looked into it. I read into it more. I practiced out in public, getting her used to all different types of noises, distractions, tall people, fort people, wheelchairs, walkers, screaming kids, strollers behind her. When she went react and there was a peep coming out of her, it was, you know, I think we actually can do this. And so when we took our first evaluation, the evaluator was like, what is this breed? What does she do? And so when we finished our evaluation, she goes, I've never seen this breed do therapy, but you've defied the odds and she's done well. Of course, during our evaluation, she was making noises. On my end, I'm like, quiet, that's enough, that's enough. And the gal said, no, that's her. She's not barking. She's talking. She's excited. And she said, you know, people are going to love that. And she goes, take that to your advantage. You know, so once we got through that evaluation, it was the scary part, trying to figure out where we wanted to go. But she's found her niche real quick on what she wanted to do. So we've been doing that since 2019. You know, she loved running around. Would she excel in like Fast Cat? Probably. But I think she really enjoys the human interaction, the hand in hand and being there for other people. Yeah, definitely. 
Was there anything that surprised you in your training journey once you decided to start training towards becoming a therapy dog team? How quick she was to catch on to things. Basic obedience for some dogs, it can take a long time. She got on pretty quickly, but it was more of being able to heal the sick and be there for even just medical staff. Like I said, I have family members that are currently going through treatment and it's not someone that she'll go to frequently. One day we went to a family member's house. She walked right up to that person and just licked her. And my family looked at me like, what did you do? How did you train? And I said, I didn't train that. It's built somewhere in her brain. She knows to take care and to be there, you know? So it was just amazing to kind of see something in her brain. They just know. They want to help. They want to please. That was at the beginning of our journey. And I felt that we were in the right spot. We found the right sport, I guess, or job for her. And this is kind of typical. Does. She'll lay here with the patient after she, she's excited. <laughs> After she says hello, Uh, (laughs) says hello, we have to really explain to people that she wants to say hi. She wants to say hello. And after she says her hello, she does what she's meant to do. Yeah, I love that. Was there anything about her breed that you needed to address in training that you learned with her? Just being able, when she gets in these excited moments, either it be needing to step away from a patient's room or if there's a lot of people being able to say, hang on, give me a moment. Let me take her outside. Let me come right back. Or even just saying, hey, a few people at a time. Because it can be overwhelming when there is a lot of people and they see a tiny, cute, puppy looking kind of dog. You want to rush and you want to go to it. So being able to manage her, being able to calm that excitement with sports of quiet, using some of her favorite treats if I needed to. But ultimately, just if I'm calm and I'm relaxed, she's going to pick up on that. If I'm stressed. As you know, it doesn't help the situation. They feel anything on that leash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they feel the leash tension. They also smell like our stress hormones and everything. So. Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> I think with her breed, it was mainly just, at least with Pixel, the excitement, yeah. the noises, the chatter, the wanting to talk. That's what a lot of them do. They get really excited. So what I worked on with her in public was, if you want to say hi, you'll get attention for being quiet. Yeah. You, you can say hello, but the second it turns into a bark, we're going to back off and try again. It took us a lot of time, but I think she got onto that consistency of, I want the attention and how do I do it? Yeah. She seems like just a really happy dog. She loves to work. Like I said a little bit ago, you grab the backpack and I tell her, do you want to go work? She sees the best and for three or four minutes of squealing and jumping. And the second we get there, her chest is up, her tail is up. She's prancing. She has a good time and she loves it. We try to do about an hour a day of therapy, maybe two, just depending on how she's feeling, her spunkiness. And you know when she's done, she has a conversation with you. And that's my key to go, you know what? She's telling me, let's go. Yeah. I love that she advocates for herself and that you acknowledge that and respect that. That's great. Janet wants to know what her favorite treat is. Pixel's favorite treat is a treat called poppers from Petsmar. It's like a blueberry beef. And we only give those really when we are working. I want to make it special for Pixel and not just a day-to-day treat. Every once in a while, some salmon. But the poppers, they're bite-sized little balls. And she looks forward to getting those when she's working. We have also in our freezer here at the house, doggy ice cream. Okay. The week like this, we go to therapy and we come home and it's beating hot give her some ice cream but yeah her reward is typically her little poppers or like salmon so you've been volunteering for five years together yeah Yeah. kyle curious how many therapy visits pixel has done approximately she has done if i can recall looking back online we've done about 115 visits okay so roughly we've seen about four thousand people in our time doing therapy. Our hospital that we visit, UCI Medical Center, is about three miles from the house. So it's not too far. So we see different patients, staff. We do what we can once a week, typically. Yeah. But yeah, 115 right now. That's great. When she advocates for herself and says, hey, mom, like I need to go. What does self-care look like for you and for her when you're kind of decompressing from those therapy visits? So when we get home, we sanitize our stuff, we hang it up, we put it away so it's nothing that she can go and 
in theme year and lay on, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So there is no additional excitement. But really, when we come home, we just kind of, I like to call it potato. We, <laughs> we really do nothing. We have the air conditioning on. And typically, though, silly as it sounds, she'll go out and lay in the sun. If she wants to decompress in the sun, I'll kind of hang outside with her. But she wants to do exactly what she's doing right now. Just being with her mom and sleeping. <laughs> I might even take a nap with her. She looks like she's fighting sleep right now. She's ready. <laughs> Just so cute. Mary Rose says she looks like a baby wolf, which is so unique. And she's curious how much she weighs. So Pixel weighs about 14 pounds. Okay. Mentally, she's about 100. <laughs> but when you get all the time, is that a baby wolf, a baby husky, chihuahua husky? I've had every once in a while, is that a cat? It's a dog, for sure enough. But yeah, she's about 14 pounds. Okay. She's got some really long legs, though. So when you see her standing up, she looks about maybe between 15 and 20. Okay. But yeah, just about 14 pounds. She's not a wild eater. She doesn't like to eat a bunch. She eats typically once a day to keep her little figure. She's my little baby wolf. <laughs> Are you bred from Huskies? Do you know? So they bred these guys starting in the 70s. Okay. And they bred them with the Alaskan and Siberian Husky, okay. Eskimo, American Eskimo, okay. and then a Super Key. Okay. Uh, and so that's how they got these guys. So they've got the shedding hair, like their cousins, the talking attitude, or the dramatic <laughs> noises. <laughs> a lot of that also is from the Skipper Key. They come back from barge dogs. So the rats on the barges, when they see those, they want to catch them. Mm -hmm. And they scream. So that's where a lot of their noises come from. Same thing with their facial features. The Skipper Key has that thin, long nose. They can range in size. So she's a typical standard size. They have a toy, miniature, and standard. Actually, I'm sorry. She's a miniature, not a standard. So there's different sizes. You can see some as small as, I want to say, probably five or six pounds. Oh, wow. Some, you know, 20 pounds, 25, really. The variety does differ. Same as their coat. So black and white, black, red and white. Some that are all white. Their eyes are different color. Party eyes are so like green and brown, blue, all brown. It just really depends what you're looking for with these guys. Yeah. Jared's curious if Clay Kai's making the same amount of exercise as Huskies and other dogs like that. I mean, any dog needs their exercise, regardless of the breed. You know, your mm -hmm. Chihuahua needs the same amount, your Terriers, your Clay Kai's. Your Boston Terriers, we get our exercise every day. There's not a specific amount that I try to go for with her. As long as she's getting out, she's getting to smell the world, getting to work her brain a little bit more. It definitely helps with the training and the therapy. She's not a mushing dog. I have never tried to really mush her like her cousins, the Husky. But I would say their energy is, if not more, than a Husky. But I wouldn't say more, not the same. Yeah. Yeah, he was just curious. Sarah, is there a story that stands out to you that you can share that's an example of why you like volunteering with Pixel? We had a patient a few weeks ago that we visited, and we don't really see a lot of pediatric where we are at just because Children's Hospital of Orange County is so close by. But when we hear of them and we know that they are present, we like to go make a visit. This was a younger pediatric patient that day that we went and he had some pictures on the wall. He colored some coloring pages. We had his phone out, Legos out. And I asked him, I said, who's your favorite Star Wars character? Have you watched all the movies? And he said, yep, yep, yep. And I said, you know what? Pixel likes Star Wars too. She kind of sounds like Chewbacca. <laughs> and sure enough, she made just a little noise and that it made that patient laugh. The mother and father actually had told me that he hadn't really talked during his time there, they pointed and said the dog has helped him. In the 30, 45 minutes that we were there, he was talking and laughing and he had cartoons on and he didn't even care that those were on. He wanted the dog. And at some point, Pixel ended up falling asleep on the side of his lap. They were showing pictures of their dog and talking about Star Wars and Disneyland and things that he enjoyed. Stories like that definitely that's why we do what we want to do is we hear those stories of when you don't feel good and you're in a strange hospital, 
you don't want to talk to somebody that you're not familiar with. But when you've got a dog there, they're not there to judge you. They're there to help you and make you heal. So this is what she did with that patient right here. <laughs> we were there for about 45 minutes with the one patient and we're happy that he went home, but we were sad that we could make a second visit to go and see him smile and talk again. Yeah, that's really special. Your tiny Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> You recently signed up to receive your crisis response credentials, yeah? Yeah, so we've received that. We're waiting on our all of our luggage, per se, backpack, shirt, the jacket. We haven't received any calls or emails for that. So we're thankful in a sense of that. You know, we never want to take that emergency call. We never want to see any of that. But if we need to be there for the people, for our community, we will. But like Pet Partner said, we don't want emergencies in this world. We want to keep the peace, but we are ready at any time. So. We haven't taken any crisis calls yet, but when it does, we're excited and ready to take that. What did you need to do in order to apply for that? So after, I want to say, 50 visits with pet partners, I'm not a thousand percent on that one. I want to say it's like 50 visits or X amount of hours. You'll get an invite through pet partners. I could have signed up with her two years ago, but I wanted to have more stability with her. I wanted to make sure, hey... We're stable where we're at and you still enjoy it because she just turned seven in March. So after she's getting older, we want to make sure that's why we test every two years is do you enjoy it? Do you love it? Do you want to continue doing it? And the more we've gone, the more she's been more peppy. And I'm like, we can do this. I felt competent enough in Pixel and myself to take on that role as a crisis response with pet partners in my community. Yeah, that's great. Do you have any advice for someone who's interested in getting started as a therapy dog team? I think the biggest thing is advocating for your dog, not necessarily the breed. Every dog is different. Every dog has a different personality. You'll know when the dog's ready. I felt at three years old with Pixel that she was ready to go. I feel like that's a very common age for a lot of dogs to be ready for therapy is three or four, but advocating. So especially since she is a very vocal dog, letting people know that she's talking to you and no, she's not mad at you or she's not aggressive or making you little jokes like she's Chewbacca or she likes Chewbacca. And with her, I made her a trick dog. So being able to do tricks. So if there is someone that's maybe afraid of dogs, not even just a small dog, having her shake their hand or waving hi to them or spinning around. And that way it's not as scary. Just advocating, being able to speak up for your dog, even though she can't speak up for herself, <laughs> being able to let them know that anything is possible. You just have to put the word out there that she might be nervous. Let me take her outside and come back. And then, of course, we want to advocate for the breed. They are cute. And we've had people numerous times say, she's so cute. I want one. She is so good. And I have to remind people that training, consistency, and you will get there. As much as we wish they come ready to go out of the wound, it doesn't happen like that. You know, we have to train it in them. So I think just advocacy. Yeah. Yeah, I know you mentioned her personality is pretty unique for the Kai too, in terms of just being so in tune with therapy work. I talked with Casey about her GSP can be a while back and same thing that it's really about, you know, like you said, train the dog in front of you, look at the dog in front of you. There's breed standards and breed stereotypes for lack of a better word, things that are common for the breed. And then there's the dog in front of you, no matter what their breed is. And that's again, why we ended up doing therapy. I could have done agility, fast cat, dog diving, whatever it may be, but everywhere I went, Pixel went. I went to the bathroom. She's going with me to the bathroom. I'm trying to change my clothes and she's just watching me. It's little things like that. And I'm like, well, she's so bonded and attached to me that therapy ended up working. I get a lot of people that tell me, wow, she's so attached to you. Wow, her attention is on you. And I feel like as a therapy team, regardless of your breed, you want them to pay attention to. You want them to be ready for what's next. Where are we going? What are we doing? If you've got a dog that's not really focused, you don't know what's going to happen next. They're not really focused. Yeah. Yeah. Lillian and Bree are agreeing with you in the comments. And Bree said, yeah, people want therapy dogs, but they often don't want to put the time in with the daily training. We're still training. You know, the training never stops. Well, later today, we're going to go out in public and train and keep the consistency, making sure she's listening and not doing this all day. We want to make sure her next evaluation, if she's really wanting to focus and be that therapy dog, we'll still do it. We still got a lot of time left on our pet partners. That's awesome. 
Well, your cousin Brownie says they're very proud of you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Is there anything else that you wanted to share while you're here, Sarah? Advocating, making sure your training is consistent. Finding the right facility, I think, is a big thing. You know, making sure that the people at your facility know who you are. They know the dog. Being involved in events at your facility, too, especially at a hospital, they need the dogs, mm -hmm. patients or staff. Regardless, I think just making sure the dog wants to be there. The dog is happy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to force anything. Yeah, that actually takes me back to, I know earlier you mentioned it took you a while to find the right fit for where to volunteer with her. How did you kind of identify where she was going to excel and what things to look for? One of our first few visits that we did was a convention at the Anaheim Convention Center. Mm -hmm. It was like a parking convention. The first hour, I think we met probably 500 people. And it was just that constant flow of like, hi, pet, hello. Her mind was so busy that there was not a moment that she had to be a different type of dog from therapy, you know, anxious or whatever if she really wanted to. Yeah. And then the following week, we went to an elementary school for a reading for Read With Me. And you could just tell the vibe was different, a little bit more anxious. Of course, kids love dogs, especially a puppy looking kind of dog and more screams coming from the crowd. And we love the kids, but you could just tell it wasn't her jam. We've done elementary schools before, but she will excel in high school, going to high school, college, but different responsibility. Yeah. I think at that age, the people know, oh, you look maybe nervous. Maybe we need to walk away and come back. So after we've done a few visits like that, conventions, she was great. Again, schools and kids, not so much, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then I had seen the post on Pet Partners for UCI Medical Center. I reached out and said, here's a picture of my dog. We're newer to the area with Pet Partners and Pet Therapy. Is this a breed that you guys would accept? And can we meet? And sure enough, their response was yes please come in. And ever since then, we took off from there. We've had the warmest welcome at UCI and we couldn't be any happier where we're at. I love that. It looks like Miss Pixel needs a nap, so I don't <laughs> want to hold you here forever. But if people want to follow your journey, where can they find you? The so word Pixel, the therapy dog, underscore the kind. I don't really do too much on Facebook with our pet therapy, so it's mainly just Instagram. Uh -huh. And that's where you can find us. We'll be here on your page all the time. We send people when they are interested in pet therapy to your Instagram page, your Facebook page, your podcast. Very helpful. We listen to them every week. So thank you for doing that for everybody. Thank you. It's a total honor and privilege on my part. So looking forward to getting this episode up on there so more people can meet you. Thank you so much. Well, have a great day, Sherry. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.